your libations. Get your libations. Get whatever you need. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be as late tonight, but I'm having such a struggle trying to figure out um youtube used to i used to just be one click and i'm on and now i gotta go into youtube and do some stuff and then come on and i kept forgetting stuff it's a it's a hell but anyway family i am happy you all are here it is wonderful that you all are here and we're gonna have a conversation as we always do but before we do that as usual let's do what we have to do please 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 hit that like button for me because you know mine is if you want to donate, go to DonateBrown.com or Patreon.com slash Wacarnell. If you want to become a patron, um, dollar sign Breaking Brown for the cash app if you want to do that. But liking costs you nothing. Subscribing to the channel costs you absolutely nothing if you are not yet, yet subscribed to the channel. And we're still talking about a fight today. So I left it up, but it's a different kind of fight. Right? It's a different kind of fight that we're having. But before I forget, before I forget, because I will forget... Do not forget that this is the book that we're reading. I think the, the day that I settled on, hold on a second, let me let me make absolutely sure. Um, because I had put it on Thanksgiving, which just would have been awful. So I put it, I changed it to December the 10th. So that Thursday, December the 10th, is not going to be our usual. December the 10th is when we will be reading this book. The half has never been told. December the 10th. So please, 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 please. Um, you know, that gives you enough time. We are still in October. October, so that gives you enough time and give you some extra time and we won't be coming into your holiday right so i that is that is wonderful 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 that is wonderful so i don't want to impede on anybody's holiday or do none of that i'm not trying to not trying to do that to you so listen fam we have to talk about something that i will say not gonna take too much time tonight but something i will say to you i didn't want to talk about I did not want to talk about it. So I don't know if, if we can go back. If we can go back just a, just a, just a, just a little while. I think, you know, when we talk about Amy Coney Barrett, for those of you who don't know, um, you know, uh, Obama couldn't get through Mary Garland for a number of reasons that we've discussed, um, including obstructionism, but some other reasons in terms of putting together or putting forth a candidate that we wanted to rally around. Nobody was excited about him. The Republicans said we ain't, we don't want him. And since since the left didn't want him either, then nobody do nothing. Well, because Mitch McConnell said we don't, we gon', we not gonna, we not gonna do that in an election year. That's not what we do. But then he came right back and he said, well, we finna confirm this one. We finna get her in there because Trump might not get reelected, so we finna get this one in there. And we don't care about what we said last time. We gonna do what we do because the Republicans. Republican Party is about winning uh, uh, for white capital. It's not about doing the right thing or having some kind of moral code. That's not what we're seeing in, in the main. Not saying we're not, we're not having no kind of everybody, but that's what we've kind of seen as of late, right? So we're talking about this and there has been a lot of conversation that I would rather have not seen and I absolutely would not want to partake in. So this is kind of, you know, we hear a lot of talk about her family. Oh, Amy Coney Barrett, who does the laundry at your house? Yeah. See, we made it, some people made it about the fact that she adopted uh, uh, black children um, in Haiti and that sort of thing. And now we're talking about motherhood and oh my goodness isn't that wonderful and so on and so forth now here's the problem and this is why i call it the politics of presentation because there's a problem with it let me see if i can find this one image because it kind of brings it home there's an issue with how we do politics even in terms of like so if you say i say i don't want to talk about this the problem becomes the problem becomes that a lot of other people made her family news. And they're still talking about it. And they kept talking about it as if her presentation, she has a family, she has a large family. She has a child that she takes for not only the two, you know, the two black children, she has, she has white children, she has a, a child with Down syndrome. It's, it's as if that alone 
means that you're going to do the right thing for a certain group of people. So I guess we're supposed to believe for that you're absolutely going to do the right thing for disabled people. You're absolutely going to do the right thing for ADOS because you have black children. And I think this is part of the problem with the politics of presentation. What I mean by that is very simple. It's very, very simple. Even in terms of our other politics, even when you talk about Democrats, we have this idea. We have this idea that the, the politician, that's somebody I want to have a beer with. That's a respectable person. They have a respectable look. There are things we want to see. We want to see a blue shirt or a tie or a certain kind of suit. That's the politics of presentation, presenting something kind of perfect. And what you start to see and what we have to do in terms of how we do things. And that's why, that's why nothing, I don't think people understand that nothing happens. Not anything transformative happens to the ADOS community and the black community at large without the ADOS movement because we have a level of specificity that pays really good attention to actually what's going on and what is the policy and what is the personnel and what is this person built of and what does that mean that goes outside of your family. See, this was the presentation. That's the presentation. Look at these wonderful kids that were raised and da 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 da. Trump's kids look wonderful too. What does that tell you? Right? It's the politics of just presentation. She must be a wonderful person. She went and got poor children. I'm not saying that she's not. Listen, let me tell you this. I don't judge a person's. I try not to judge a person's heart because I don't know anybody's heart. What I do know, though, is what you say. What I do know, though, is when you contradict yourself. What I do know is when what you say doesn't necessarily make sense. And it doesn't coincide. And it doesn't go well with what we already know. That's what I do know. So what does that mean? Well, here's the thing. Amy Coney Barrett's take on voting rights act exposes her entire legal philosophy as a lie. Well, hold on a second. Barrett claims to defer to original meaning of statutes, but when it comes to the Voting Rights Act, that defense is out the window. Well, let's go a little bit further. On Wednesday, Senator Dianne Feinstein of California, the top-ranking Democrat on the Judici Judiciary Committee, asked Barrett about the case, Shelby versus Holder. In particular, she asked Barrett if she agreed with her mentor, Justice Antonin Scalia's conclusion that the act was a perp, perp, uh, perpetuation of racial entitlement. Barrett declined to answer, instead repeatedly framing the case as one in which the Supreme Court decided whether, decided whether the law's key provision, which requires states with a history of discrimination to clear their voting law changes with the Department of Justice, was outdated, outdated, needed to be updated from the 1960s. The court in a 5-4 decision freed the states of federal oversight. Now let me just tell you something. For those of you who are for those of you who don't necessarily who don't necessarily remember. I remember. For those of you all who don't here's what happened. Because we're a racist country, and because this country has been oppressing ADOS multi-generationally since slavery, there was something that said, in the terms of in terms of the, the way they gutted the Voting Rights Act, hey, you gotta you gotta run this by us, and we make sure it's all right. And we make sure that this racist country ain't doing racist stuff. Right? Well, mm, and there's a reason for that. Because even up until the gutting and all that stuff, what happened was they were moving the day. Like, go back and look. One day I just have to have a conversation. One day I'm just going to have to have a conversation on the Voting Rights Act and what they were doing. What they were doing with the Voting Rights Act. And what I mean by that is this. They were changing the dates of elections and, 
and 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 killing killing the election, saying this election don't count, and all they were doing all kind of stuff when black people were getting in power in places. Cause it's a racist country. That's how racist countries behave, right? So you need that. But here's the here's the key. If you say you're a textualist and you read the law, you read the law as that law came out. You don't read the law in terms of like nothing else. You read, you, you interpret that as it was written. The letter of the law. You go by the letter of the law. You don't, you don't, you don't define it. That's what that means. That's what she says she is in the Scalia way of the word. You don't redefine it or define it. Uh, uh, you don't update it. You say that's up, that's up for the legislature. I don't do that. Well, if you don't do that, you shouldn't do that here. See, presentation can get in the way of us seeing stuff that we really need to see. If you don't do that, if you don't do that over there and you say, well, I'm not going to reinterpret it. It's going to be what it is. The Voting Rights Act, all that stays the way it is. If anybody needs to change it or update it, that goes back to Congress. See, what you are showing me is that you are two people. What you are showing me is that you're not who you say you are. What you are showing me is this presentation. Look, this is a really good presentation. But what you are showing me is that this presentation does not matter at all. This presentation don't matter. And we got to get out of the, the politics of presentation and get into the politics of policy. Because when we talk about, you say, well, she, Yvette, though, she has, she has black kids. And I'm sure she would want her black kids to be treated a certain way. Right? That's what you were saying. So I, I would assume from that that she's not racist. And I'm not calling her racist. I don't know the woman. But what I'm saying is that I have seen some problematic decisions. So here's, here's, here's one. This is from the AP. A look at Judge Amy Coney Barrett's notable opinions. Well, see, that's interesting. Here we go right here. Let's talk about race and discrimination in the workplace. Barrett wrote for a unanimous three-judge panel in 2019 that upheld the dismissal of a workplace discrimination lawsuit by Terry Smith, a black Illinois transportation employee who sued after he was, he was fired. Smith's claim included that he was called a racial slur by supervised by the Lloyd Colbert. But check this out. The N-word is an egregious racial epithet, Barrett wrote in Smith versus Illinois uh, Department of Transportation. That said, you always got to worry about a sentence that start with, starts with, that said, that said, Smith can't win simply by proving that the word was uttered. He must also demonstrate that Colbert's use of this word altered the conditions of his employment and created a hostile or abusive working environment. Understand what that says, fam. Please understand what that says. That is saying that somebody calling you an N-word at the job, supervisor, whatever, somebody calling you in and of itself does not create a hostile work environment. You got to show that the person who called you the N-word did something in addition to calling you the N-word tangible to create a hostile work environment. So, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you just calling me a word that has been used to denote and degrade and enslave and oppress does not in and of itself create a hostile work environment. And see, that's the problem. That's the issue. Because the person who creates a hostile work environment does not necessarily do anything substantive. It's how they treat you. It's how they judge you. So let's say one thing. Let's say, let's say, let's say you late for work. Let's talk about racism for one second. Let's say you late for work. Now you late for work. True enough. You were late for work and you get wrote up being late for work. Some people will say, well, you were late. You got late. You got wrote for being late for work. Yes, but it's racist if all the white people be late and they don't get rolled up and I get rolled up. Now, if you take that to court, they're still going to say, well, you know, that you was late. The issue is I'm being treated differently. 
based on race. I'm being treated as less than. I'm being treated harshly based on that. And I can guarantee you, a man who called you the N-word at work let you know every which way that that's who you was. Now, the woman with black children said, no, it has to be more. You got to show more than that. What more than you can you show at work is somebody calling you an N-word? What more can you show than that? This flies in direct contradiction to the politics of presentation. And the ADOS and black community, we call that black respectability politics. Well, you just got to look good and clean yourself up and shake yourself off. That's what the talented tent did, didn't they? And it failed. That's not what we're about. We have to be about the politics of personnel, the politics of policy, the politics of resources, not the politics of presentation. Because this is somebody who will, who will absolutely have black children but say, well, you're going to need more. You're going to need more than, than, than that. Than being called the N-word. You know, sometimes I feel, and I'm not casting aspersions on her. I'm not saying nothing negative about her at all. But sometimes in terms of, I'd say a lot of stuff about her and her policy and her judicial um, uh, rulings. But I'm not saying nothing about what goes on in her house. But what I will say is this. It sometimes feel like, sometimes, that some white people adopt black children just to prove that, like, the problem with the kids is, is, is black culture. The problem is they ain't raised right. The problem is the, the people who's doing the raising. The problem is X, Y, Z. The problem is I want to prove because I have ambitions that I'm not racist. There's a lot of stuff going on here and I ain't going to talk about it because like I said, I don't know nobody's heart. Right? But I see some stuff that don't quite, really quite make sense. You know? You supposed to be a... Uh, that's what you said here. Then you say this. You did, Then you say this, but then you went and did something else. Amy, Amy Coney Barrett on originalism. That means that I interpret the Constitution as a law. I understand it to have the meaning that it, that it had at, at the time people ratified it. That meaning it doesn't change over time. Yes, 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 yes. But why don't you do that with laws that are written? Because they weren't written by you. So if you don't get to update the Constitution, why do you get to update all these other laws? Tell me how that makes sense. Please make it make sense. And we have proof. We have unequivocal proof. That sometimes these people are racist. We don't know, but we have unequivocal. That N-word thing was enough for me. So what I'm saying in part is that I don't want to hear about how you wept in your house or, you know, it was a personal feeling for, for George Floyd. I don't want to hear about that. That's not the thing for me. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm not interested. I'm only because, because let me just say something. White America is very good about telling us they have empathy and they feel our pain and we wept for you. When it comes to making laws and stuff and holding people accountable and putting people in jail and, 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 and reparations and sending resources our way, you ain't going to do none of that. When it comes to saying, hey, saying the N-word is something that creates a hostile work environment, you ain't going to do none of that. But you can tell me how you wept at your house. I don't care nothing about you weeping at your house. I don't care whether you weeped outside by your little cherry tree. That don't mean nothing to me. I don't care that you that you kind of try to give off this idea that you're somehow empathetic. That don't mean nothing to me. I don't care if you act like you feel some kind of way and this, that, that. That don't mean nothing to me. And it's got to stop meaning something to us. We say, oh, well, man, you know, she did say. She did say, you know, that, you know, and she got black kids and she did say, and she did say X, Y, D. So, you know, event, you know, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe she might be kind of all right. Cause you know, how can you raise, how can you raise black babies and not be, and, and, and you know, and, and be racist? That, that's kind of impossible to do. It's kind of impossible to do that. Well, let, let's, let's, sometimes you just got to take a trip down memory lane to come back to where we are. I'm not saying this is her. I'm just saying you got to take it all into context and look at people's policies. You just can't look at who they are and who they act out in front of people act a certain way when they get in front of the in front of the in front of the cameras and all that kind of stuff they have they oh they act a certain way i'm not saying that's her i i cast no aspersions i'm just saying the sure way to deal with things is, is to deal with the policy and to deal with the until deal with the judge's decisions 
I'm not going to do. I know who you are by your deeds. I don't know who you are. I don't know your heart, but I know your deeds. And I, this is proof. When these white women did this to these kids, this was proof that you can be raising something for, you can be raising something, someone for all the wrong reasons. There's people that raise kids to just do stuff to them. There's people that have animals and throw them. You all, you see, all see all them videos of people throwing animals in the, in the elevators and stuff and doing all. People have things and kids and, and all kind of, people have spouses and relationships for that. Jury, heart mothers, drug, kill, all six children by driving SUV over California cliff. Now, I'm just telling you, now y'all remember this young man, he made famous and everybody said, oh my God, he hugged the police. He hugged the white police, man, that was so wonderful. What we didn't know about him was that he was being racially abused. That's what we did not know. We did not understand and we did not know that he was being abused and the rest of these kids were being abused by their white mothers. We had no idea. Made that man, that was a pain in that child's eye. He didn't want to go out there and hug nobody. He wasn't trying to do that. Who made him do it? Hmm? Well, we'll tell you exactly who it was. The, it, was the, it was the mamas. That's exactly who it was. Now, let's just take a let's just take a trip through this for a little bit, to shall we? Because I like I said, I don't want to deal with this, but I kept hearing it come up. And I know somebody, one of those professors, what was his name? Ibrahim, something, something, something got in trouble uh, for saying something. And I, I don't go with him because he said some negative stuff about Ados. But I'm just saying, I wasn't I was gonna leave it all alone, but they keep trying to, and when I say they. The Republicans keep trying to, y'all know y'all already got her in there. Y'all know these people like these Democrats ain't going to fight you. And if they can't, they ain't got no leg to really stand on. They put a little bit, but they not going to do that because they Republican life. Right? So when I kept hearing it, I said, you know, they keep telling Democrats not to use this. And how can they use this? But they keep trying to use it for themselves to prove that like she don't have a racist bone in her body. And let me just, let's just, so let's just go down through what happened because you know, these babies des deserved, you know, more media than they got. They got more media. The, the young man, the son got more media from hugging the cop than, than he got when we found out that they had been murdered by them mamas that was, that got drunk and decided they was just going to kill him. The driver did at least. So let's just talk a bit. Let's just talk about a little bit about what happened. Just, let's just a little, just a little revisit down memory lane, shall we? Dozens of pages of reports released this week. This was like in 2019, I think, by child welfare officials offer some clues. Taken together, they paint a portrait of a pair of mothers, one dictatorial, right? Hold on one second. One dictatorial and eccentric and the other constantly working and seldom home who doled out cruel punishments and perennially withheld food from their six children. In the Hart household, any act of insubordination Think about that word, family. Insubordination is not a word you should use for children. These are babies. Insubordination could severely could be severely punished. The children knew all too well. They are like trained robots, one worried caller told the authority, according to the newly released documents, which describe the family's dynamics. We call them little toy soldiers. One former neighbor said of the children, in the weeks since the, uh, the in the weeks since the crash, searchers fa have fanned along the Pacific coastline looking for the bodies. I, they, I think this is this is a while ago, but I just want you to look at those ages, and see what happened. Now, let's go back through a little bit more of it. Officials with the Oregon Department of Human Services became aware of the Hart family's history in 2013. An anonymous person had reported that the children appeared malnourished, and so officials contacted child welfare officials in uh, and so officials contacted child welfare officials in Minnesota, where the family have had lived for years to get information on their background. Minnesota Child Welfare said it had received six troubling reports of abuse, neglect, two of which uh, it deemed uh, it, it, it deemed to be founded. Now, here's the, let me just say this really quick. Let me just come out and say this really quick. 
you know that is that is that is the that is the that is the i don't know what you would call it maybe the privilege that is maybe the privilege of 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 being of being white in the sense of i don't know i don't know many negroes who could have this let me just these women went from state to state to state to state to state from state to like with the babies and had did all kind of things with the babies the babies done ran out the house the school teacher everybody talking about what's wrong with the babies and somehow these white women got to keep their kids these kids when you talk about race black women especially black mothers have had their kids stripped from them for far less than this so you have to understand that but what i'm trying to tell you is one of the reasons and we're going to get to it but one of the reasons one of the reasons why the people said they didn't take the kids was because they looked like a nice family presentation so let's just go to something else really quick. Let's go to it. In a 2010 case, one of the parents was found to have physically harmed Abigail, causing bruising all over her body. The dispute had been over a penny. The parents discovered one in Abigail's pocket and accused her of lying about how she got it. A spanking, a spanking ensued and got out of control. Uh, a spanking ensued, which Sarah Hart said got out of control, according to documents. The couple agreed to in-home therapy, counseling, and other skill-building activities as a remedy. Let me just say one other thing. How many, how, how often, you know, how often do we get in trouble? And people say, well, you know, that we just got to stop whipping our kids and all that stuff. And I'm not saying you don't. But what I'm saying is keep that same energy for the, for these people wasn't well, near enough smoke it was a lot of it was a lot of hemming and hawing and sadness and all that going on but what well, nearly enough smoke for that what well, nearly enough smoke nearly enough nearly enough for these white women these were racist abusers whose kids were more like pets than kids i'm telling you presentation don't matter it don't say it don't say a lot about what goes on in your home, right? So let me go to a couple more. There are a couple more quotes. We just got to go through a couple more quotes because this is. It was just to kind of remind ourselves where we are. In a telephone interview on Wednesday, a woman who lived across the street from the Hearts in Alexandria, Minnesota, described the parents as described the parents as real friendly, uh, uh, friendly girls. Still, the neighbor Lorraine Feely, 71, says she did not know their children as well because the parents didn't let them out of the house very often. When they did, the children were tight, very highly disciplined, Miss Feely said. And lastly, Oregon children forced to lie in bed for hours over a pizza dispute. That's what they, 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 get, they gave the little kids one little piece of pizza. Um, and, 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 and then they went to bed, the, the, the white women went to bed and the, and the kids ate the rest of the pizza probably cause they was hungry. And, and the, the, the white women wouldn't let, made the kids lay in bed and all kinds of stuff cause they ate the pizza. Why, who, that's torture to give a kid one little piece of pizza. These are horrible people. Having, having been made aware of allegations against the hearts, child welfare officials and the police and, and the police, not the police, the police in Oregon began their own investigation in 2013. After interviewing each family member, they found out that Jennifer, the more domineering uh, of the couple, would travel with the children to music festivals several weeks a year, that, and, and that Sarah was retail manager at a Coles, and that the family received uh, about $2,000 a month in, in adoption assistance. See, they was doing that to get the bag. That wasn't about them. It wasn't about them kids. Can't trust presentation. You cannot trust. You can only trust deeds. Police records indicate police records indicate that the Hearts had moved to Washington State by 2017, but it was not until March 23rd of this year that someone called the Department of Social and Health and Social and Health Services. The woman who called, listen to this family, the woman who called said that six months earlier, Hannah jumped out of a second story window at 1.30 a.m. and bolted inside the woman's home asking to be hidden. Hannah told the woman's husband that she had been whipped 
with belts and that her mothers were racist and begged the woman not to force her to return home. I'm not saying anything about anybody. I'm just saying that you cannot trust the politics of presentation. You cannot trust it. You should not do it. You should not entertain or engage the politics of presentation. It don't make no sense. So even, and let me just say this, presentation isn't even, it isn't just even about the presentation, right? I mean, when you think about it, think about, let me, let me just bring up some, think about what they said in this, you know, you had these white women who look normal, so they never lost their kids, which makes you, which makes you think that ADOS and blackness is just abnormal. So we're going to take your babies. We're just waiting on the reason why. So when you hear her say, Amy Codenberry says racism persists in our country. Yeah, that's kind of a gimme. We know that. But what are you going to do? Is it your idea that racism exists, but all we're going to do is kind of hope that we can be better and change our hearts? Or are you going to kind of use, use the gavel to bring that new world about that would be better for your kids or, or, or do you, how, what are you going to do? This is a problem. So when Cory Booker asked a very simple question, you condemn, do Cory Booker, you condemn white supremacy? Correct. Yes. Thank you. I'm glad to see, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to see that you, I'm glad to see that you said that. I wish our president would say the same. Yeah. Okay. But the real deal is that yeah, you can condemn it and still not 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 be on the same page as me in terms of what that looks like. You can still say that racial discrimination exists. The Negroes are right. People are still discriminating. Sometimes they get followed in stores. That's not the same as being pro-reparations, being pro a transformative black agenda. It's not the same. That's the politics of presentation. Only Trump would go around and say, well, it was, it was people on both sides. Most Republicans don't say that no more. But if you don't have the will to correct it, if, you don't, if you're not going to do that, then what are you doing? I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm just trying to figure out what it is. Let me get to what I was going to say. Cause Lindsey Graham a little dumb, but he get on my nerves so bad. I get so tired of Lindsey Graham. Hold on. Let me bring this up for a second so you can see. Bring it down. Graham to Barrett. One of the reasons you can say with confidence that you think Brown first, the Board of Education is a super president, precedent, I'm sorry, uh, is, is you're not aware of any effort to go back to the good old days of segregation by a legislative body. Is that correct? Pay attention to what they say and what they do. But one is more important than the other. You are not aware of any effort to go back to the good old days of segregation by a legislative body. Is that correct? By a legislative body. Let me tell you something. I'm about to tell you why that's not good enough. Right? You're right. Nobody went back. Now, now, let's remember Brown. Let's remember when, what's when we talk about teachers and stuff. Let's remember that part of what, part of what happened is that black teachers got ripped from the system. And so black kids just got infused into situations with a bunch of white teachers who despised them. We're talking about go back to when it happened. They used it as just a way to get rid of our black teachers when that was not even the intention of the people who brought stuff. But that's a whole nother conversation. Got to talk about that too one day. We know the importance of black teachers in the classroom. Right? So you say that, but go back to the end of that by a legislative body. Yeah, you're right. Nobody went back and said we got to undo Brown v. Board. You're exactly right, but let's guess. But, but let's let's have a conversation. You don't have to undo it. Well, why, Yvette? Why would you say you don't have to undo it? 
Why would you say that? That don't make no sense. Well, you don't have to do it because it's still, it may as well be the law of the land. It still may as well be the law of the land. Why? It's still in place. School's still segregated. You took our teachers and we still segregated. What do you think that means? I don't know why she said, you know, she said, uh, this is a precedent. This, do, 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 do. I know this is kind of a boring show to do, but you have to do it because we got to get off of this. We got to get off of presentation in a lot of ways because some of the people, even we in our own community need to vote for, we disqualify them because they don't have the certain look that we want in the people that we want to elect. No, we're not doing that. You don't get to tell us, and you know, I, you know he got to clean up his shoes. And she, I don't know, she going to have to get fired. You don't get to do that. What we have to understand, you got to understand, you don't have to legislate something if you didn't do it right in the first place. Y'all didn't do it right in the first place. Yes, nobody did and went back and said, let's, let's overturn that. But it didn't, you didn't, you didn't enforce it. Listen, the problem that we have in America, it's not just that they're not laws on the books. We got all kind of laws on the books. You know how that thing says, what if a tree falls in the forest and nobody hears it? Does it still fall? That little stupid thing. What is a law that's not enforced? Politics is personnel. Politics is outcome. What was the outcome? We still here. What's the outcome? We still here. Politics is outcomes. If we still going through the same stuff. If we still going through the same stuff, what's what's what what are we what are we talking about? You didn't fix nothing. I don't care. Listen, I don't care what kind of law you passed if you didn't fix the thing that I need to be fixed. So let's just look at a few a few little charts really quickly. This one right here is very interesting. Percentage of black students in, in, uh, in 90 to the 100% non-white schools by region. And they go all the way from 1968 to 2016. I don't know how you look with the percentage of black students uh, in 90 to 100% non-white schools. So look at that. Now, now, I'll put a pin in that. Put a pin in that. Put a pen in that and come here. Racial composition of schools attended by the typical white student. We don't have white exposure because they make sure their kids stay away from us, no, regardless of where they live. Look at that. Let me let me bring the bottom up so you see what stands for what. You see the the bottom the the black the black is black. Um, you see the, the Latin and the, and the uh, multiracial and the white. Now, what does that tell you? Go back to here. Now, look at it. We're not just talking about percentage of black students in, in 90 to 100% non-white schools by region. We're not just talking. I want you to look at the Northeast, the South. Now, who would you think would be the most racist? Go through them years. Screenshot it. Now, who would you think would be the most? Look, I want you to take read this right here real quick, and we're going to go to the chart. Nine out of 10 of the states in which black students have the lowest exposure to white students are states in which majority of students enrolled in the public schools are non-white. Michigan is the lone state with a majority of white students and yet very low exposure to white students for, for black public school students. However, there are a number of states, New York, Illinois, Maryland, New Jersey, Georgia, or Michigan, in which black exposure to white students is much lower than the overall state percentage of white students. None of these states comes close to reflecting the state's white population in school attended by the, by the typical black student. There are a number of states like Michigan in which there is a fairly high percentage of white students in the state's public schools. And yet, despite, that, despite this, black students have relatively low exposure to white students. Other Rust Belt states like Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Michigan have, has, have, have had similar or higher percentages of white students at least two-thirds of students were white, while black students on average attended public schools 
that had less than 30% white students. Now look at this chart. Data always tells the story. Data always tells the story. What you have to understand when you look at that chart, what you have to understand is how little has changed. I don't care. I don't care about her sitting there with her with her black kids. I don't I don't I don't make no assessment. What I know is anybody who would say that the N word in and of itself does not create a hostile work environment. That person is hostile to black America. That alone. You would never say that to somebody else, and you shouldn't. And how we have to understand that. We have to understand that the politics of presentation is and has always been a failure. When we look at kids, look at Trump. Oh, he got a nice family. You look at anybody. Oh, they got kids. They, they must have done something right. Look how wonderful that is. Look how wonderful they look. That's the politics of presentation and presentation is intended and effective at taking our eye off the ball. The ball is the politics. The ball is the resources. The ball is the outcome. The ball is the personnel who are supposed to implement the policies that are beneficial to us. The ball is the will of the country and anchoring the country and our people in a politics that matters, that is transformative. That is the ball game, people. It's almost like, you know, you know the thing is, one of the most interesting thing, things about it is just like, it's almost like when you think of politics, right? For me, it's almost like politics, politics builds an environment, right? So politics builds an environment. And it feels like, and when y'all call in, y'all can tell if I'm right or if I'm wrong, but I think I'm right. <laughs> it feels like politics builds for us a bunch of landmines, right? Politics builds for us treacherous stuff, soil that doesn't grow. Like, you know how you can salt soil and, and mess up the pH and it don't grow? And it feels like politics creates for everybody else milk and honey. And that's why you have to understand what politics does. See, that's what you do when you pour resources into a community. When you pour resources into a community, you build up and build out that community. That's what you do. when you rob that community and then you pass laws but you don't enforce those laws or here's another little thing that they do you pass a law but you don't put any money behind the law right if you if you have signed go and google the worst thing uh uh bill clinton never did welfare reform i think it was written in like um the early 90s go and go and look at that and look at how Bill Clinton and his Republican allies or whatever in terms of being Republican like how they gutted that in a specific way it's kind of what I said you know it's kind of you got to watch what people do you got to watch their deeds not what they say it's kind of what I said on social media earlier today listen we got a lot of people we got a lot of people talking about you know um the Republicans used to talk about it all the time well you know uh uh um uh we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna write we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna write welfare reform, write welfare in such a way that you know it discourages illegitimate. It discourages illegitimacy. Well, yeah, but then you write it in such a way where you make the father have to run off, and because that's how you maximize benefits in a lot of ways in, in terms of how the welfare is implemented. And how is that good for family, especially for the the poor, right? Especially for poor 
poor ADOS women, right? The, the worst, we're the worst off. And so you maximize benefits. The man can't be around. How does that help family? You got to watch what people do. You got to, I'm not saying you don't pay attention to what they say, but you got to watch what they do. What people do in their deeds is a tale. It'll tell you everything. It'll tell you everything about resources. It'll tell you everything about what resources are supposed to do. It'll tell you everything. And we have to be in our community. We have to be builders. We do. But you have to remember what the bricks are made of. The bricks are made of policy, enforcement, judicial rulings, all of that. The bricks are not made of this woman's family. The bricks are not made of, oh my gosh, she got two black children. I don't care about your little children running around. All oh God's children need shoes. I, that is not my issue. And I don't assume that you cannot be racist or implement or, or rule in such a way on racist policy that makes life more difficult for ADOS because you have those children. I'm not casting aspersions on you. I'm just telling you what I think and what I feel. That's just what it is. I tried to tell you. So I think as I go to break, one of the things I want to just make clear, like I said, the bricks are made of something. And if you think the bricks are made of presentation, oh, well, that's nice. And she got the little babies. And no, that's the reason they chose her because they knew you were going to have a hard time killing her in terms of, in terms of how you do media. You were going to have a really hard time doing that. Really hard time doing that. With the kids. This is all a play. These people are all playing games, family. But listen, what we have to do is keep our eye on the bricks. We're builders. We build. The bricks are made of something. Resources, policy, judgments, all of that. That's, that's how we build. All this other stuff, throw it in the trash. We don't care. We're not in our family. It don't matter at all. Throw that stuff all in the trash. So let me take a quick break, fam, before I can bring in the calls and let you all have your conversations. Give me a give me a few minutes to bring in the calls and do all of that kind of thing. And we will be back as usual and we will have the conversation.
Sosa fam, we are back. We are back. Hold on one second. We about to go straight to the phones. Um, anybody, have y'all been watching this? Have y'all been watching this? Because you know what the other problem is? The other thing that's so sad is that this whole thing has become like, it's not even a thing anymore. It's not even where somebody reveals what they, what they believe or anything like that. And, and the thing is she could, she's going to get, she's going to get voted in regardless. So it's just kind of cowardice in a way that she doesn't do that. But listen, fam. Oh, I almost forgot to say, um, I had initially said that the chapter meeting would be this Sunday. I will send you out a notification, but it will be a week um, from Sunday. So it would be a week from this Sunday coming up. I have another meeting this Sunday. Also, they're usually the third Thursday. Uh, uh, the, what did I say? Uh, they, they, there's usually a call-in show the third Thursday. We would, I will not be doing that this time. I have another meeting, but I might go live that day and take some calls. Um, but early in the day, so pay attention to your notifications. And if you are not getting notifications, um, I don't know what to tell you. You need to because I might go live earlier uh, in the day than that. All right. So probably maybe around seven or something, maybe. So stay tuned. Anyway, fam, let's get into it. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. I am going to my first. What's wrong with all this stuff popping up? I'm going to my first call. I'm going to 910-910. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you fine, fam. What's going on? Hi, Eva. Um, What's up? I think we went to Harvard together. <laughs> Did we? Yeah. Um, I'm Tiffany. Right now I live in uh, North Carolina, but I'm from D.C. proper. Okay. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I, I feel everything that you want, you're, you're talking about with um, Kamala. And I, and I just want to tell you this. I was at Howard. Um, in the school of business, right? Okay. But I had a, I, 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 when I graduated, went to Oxford for po politics. Okay. Right. And, th and then I got married. I met my husband there and I introduced him to you several years ago. Mm. And my children have almost grown up with you Aww. on the last four five years <laughs> wonderful uh, yeah i mean like for real for real like my my kids two sons they spout out all of your language <laughs> and um either before it was an a or the dos i know we used to have dos and we was like oh that ain't gonna work <laughs> <laughs> that's not gonna work no, see, <laughs> we had shirts with the flags on it because we're like, we no, we're citizens. We, this is our country, and it was just D O S. Oh, yeah. And my son just took a marker like it was a freaking crayon from um, Sesame Street and put an eight in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> tell him, tell him, he, but, he, he, he a little gangster. That's a little gangster right there. I ain't finna get no new he, printing. I'm finna just write it on here. Just, Permanent marker. He's very powerful, mm -hmm. and um, the last part of what you were talking about, I just want you to—I just want to tell you, um, last year, uh, your influence. I like my husband doesn't like me saying I have intellectual crushes, but whatever, I don't care. <laughs> but you're one of you them. You said whatever, I don't care. Uh, you just threw him out. You threw him out the window. Whatever, I don't care. <laughs> I know. I know. I don't care. And he knows that. I'm like, that's my intellectual crush. Um, he's got a little one on YouTube, but I think Aww, he gets jealous. That's love. I, I'm like, I like your, I love the mind, and you have helped me so much. I started carrying a constitution mm. in my purse when I was about 14 years old. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's been a big thing. And then, you know, the, we were at Howard at the same time. So you know what that climate is like. And everybody's about, you know what it was like in the late 90s. Tell them what it was. Like, Tell them what it was. Don't be scared. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone was about just getting their thing. Like, mm -hmm. whatever their thing was, um, just getting money successful their job opportunities and all of that right let me ask you 
And yeah, then, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm, let me let you finish your statement. Yeah, go ahead. Getting that no, money. Go ahead. No, no, it's okay. Did you go in the school of B when they used to have the people at the school of B wear them little suits? I remember the school of B going in there wearing them suits, yeah. them blue suits y'all you had to wear. And I used to be like, why is they wearing them clothes? Then they go to school, they gotta wear them clothes. They used to wear. It was like every Wednesday, huh? <laughs> Yes, mm. yes, I was there then, and I also was there when we protested in the A building. I was there. Oh, oh, yeah, uh, I remember, yeah. That time. yeah, yeah, the A building. I don't, so I don't think, I you was know, you know, yeah, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't think people realize, like, I think how it was one of the, the least black respectability, but it was still black respectability, but like, yeah, I, 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 I do remember, like I said, y'all wearing them suits. Um, I I was in the school of political science. I I, I do remember that, and, and I remember asking somebody, "Why not have them suits on?" But anyway, so but I think I don't think people even remember how we suffered. Like I don't think people even like. There's no way. Do you? I, I don't think any. If you haven't gone to Howard, and maybe it's true. If y'all went to other HBCUs, y'all can tell me. But I don't think. Do y'all remember registration? You do you remember registration at Howard? I used to call. <laughs> I used to call registration at Howard Lord of the Flies. I remember, I remember, I because later in Howard, I was in student government, and I remember, I remember running to the A building. That's our administration building. When she says the A building, she's talking about the administration. For those of you who don't know, and I remember like just stopping the financial advisor in the street, like you can't do this to me, because <laughs> I had been kicked out of all my classes because the money didn't go through and the loan didn't go through, and I was like, we will fight right here in the street, you know. And it was just like, dude, you, you bet you're gonna get arrested at your school. But I was in student government, so she knew who I was. And see, I think people don't even understand that, like, even that is a little bit of like social capital. Lionel Riley said, "What suits?" The business school students had to wear blue suits on Wednesdays. Like, that's what. <laughs> Oh my God! They had to wear blue suits. They thought they was gonna be CEOs. <laughs> we did. We did have the blue suits. <laughs> and I, you know, I wasn't mad at you. I wasn't mad at you because we all had a little black respectability in us back then. I'm, 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 I'm in it too. We was gonna do stuff and do stuff, but I remember seeing y'all, and I say they, they got these Negroes dressed for the Fortune 500. They ain't playing. Same thing in Morehouse, they said. They said the same thing going on in Morehouse. So I know I was there. I remember. I remember. I also remember how University is the only one of the only schools, I guess, that got a that, that couldn't cook. They had no good food at lunchtime. How do you be a black school and don't have no good cafeteria? This is some bull. I remember a lot of stuff. So it <laughs> just is what it is, fam. And now we're here. <laughs> Ta-da! And now we're here. And I, I... <laughs> Howard had so much You're stuff going. Insane. I ain't gonna speak bad about my school, but God, dog, oh, y'all had some trash going on. Woo! <sighs> had my family we, in them we Yeah, we yeah, were yeah. If you can survive and, Howard, um, you can survive anything. You can, you can cut somebody. If you can survive Howard. You can survive. If you can survive registration at Howard, you can, you can, you can be a killer. Cause that's what that's what it took to survive that. People was in their dorm room crying, ain't got no money. So I understand, but I understand what you're saying too. I, I, I actually think I think that one of my roommates was friends with you, but I was, you know, you know how I was, but I'm a, I'm gonna move on to so I don't take too much time. Okay, all right, but fair. when <laughs> you when I heard the sound yeah, they probably was. I had a few friends. I was aloof. What you said, fam? <laughs> I didn't, say, I didn't say anything. Okay, okay. But when I when I found you, um, my my kids were like, "Oh my gosh, that's your voice." So mm. from there, so you know the culture, and I'm from DC proper. Mm. And when you were talking about um, the kids and everything else on the last part of the segment, um, I did something very different and so I did the Wall Street thing mm. I did trading I actually studied comparative politics at Oxford I did all what was supposed to be the right things and I'm from that area mm. and I got married to a man that I met in uh, would you Clowning the school of B with the blue suit. <laughs> I married a man that was from there. Wonderful. And 
decided to homeschool mm. 18 years ago. Wow. And we didn't, we didn't have the, um, we didn't have any, like my parents, my, my parents had died. Like I went through a lot of death and a lot of stuff when I was very young. My parents had died. My uh, mm. brother had died. And I was always the odd one in my family. And when uh, we got married, it was like, I got pregnant and mm. I'm like, this is what I need to do. And wow. it wasn't what I was supposed to do. Oh, wow. Okay. I get that. I get so that. My children, I, I got pregnant right after marriage. And my children were never, they were supposed to do monastery or um, private school or whatever. But I was so invested in who they were as young black men. And I didn't even know as much of who I was until we found what you were doing. Wow. Wow, that's fam. That's that's that. That's the that's the that's the that's. I love that. Oh, that's the best call. Yeah, see, that's people don't say. That's what makes my that that makes it. I don't need nothing else. That's fine. <laughs> that's wonderful, right there. I appreciate you, and being from Howard too, Bison the Bison. I appreciate. It. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, fam. I appreciate yeah, that. I'm I'm, a, I'm wait. I'm gonna finish it up. I wrote I wrote some notes just because I, okay. I didn't think I was gonna get it. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> I homeschooled these dudes until they went to co uh, like got to college, uh -huh. and I uh, we we were working, running our own businesses, and mm. I love how you talk about there's working for yourself mm -hmm. versus being a business owner, and I've been through all of that. I have made everything and lost everything mm. and we've had to use white people as the face of our companies just to get stuff done and um, in 2020 huh? I said well whenever you did it, maybe 2015 like this is the modern era <laughs> that you're talking about using a white face for your company yes oh no that's that's like for real we really did that we like we've really had to do that and have have gained a lot and then lost everything so mm. i um i just want you to know i like you're you're one of my <laughs> you're you are literally one of my intellectual crushes and one of the other things that i love about what you've done and then listening to you talking about the kids and kamala and all of that like, I know what I put in. I laid everything down. All mm -hmm. of my education, everything for my children. And I still don't have a leg up mm. and have introduced my whole family to this understanding. And what you gave was a pride because a lot of people thought, you know, I was um, mixed or whatever the terms are that people use. And... I'm in North Carolina now, and one of the funny things, and even in protest, because my sons and I, we speak a lot around North Carolina, and when people say they think I'm, um, no, I won't say the tribes because I don't want to expose anyone, but they think that I'm them, and I say, no, I'm just black. My husband says, no, nah, you're just a regular bird. <laughs> That's how <laughs> Disrespectful, man. Yeah, tell them that. Tell them, tell them we, we're, not, we're not gonna have no disrespect. Ain't nothing about us regular. Ain't nothing about ADOS regular. We a warrior class of people that done survived and persevered and came up and keep fighting. Ain't no other group like us. You tell them I said that and you, and I mean it. <laughs> oh, he's gonna, he's gonna hear it. He's gonna hear it. Okay. He's gonna be crazy. He's gonna be tripping that I got in before him. <laughs> but I introduced him to you. And, Thank you, fam. But Thank it's you so, so much. funny because this particular tribe uh, of Native Americans, they look just like us. Oh. But when I say, no, they look, um, you know how various we look all over the place. 
Yeah, no, I believe you, fam. I believe you. I believe you. We got, but but you know, I want to thank you for coming. I appreciate it. You know, I appreciate you calling in and and and, and giving it up like that, and 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 from bison to bison because a lot of people think um, because you went to Howard or because you did X, Y, and Z that that you know, and I think people like Roland Martin and people who always preach that don't really talk about the other side of it. They don't talk about the other side of it. So I want to thank you, fam, for calling in. I appreciate it. I appreciate the love. Thank you so much, fam. Appreciate you. Tell, tell your husband we ain't regular. Uh, All right. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Howard University. Woo, I remember that. Yes, I was I do. I don't be you can't be no Yvette, come outside. For what? You niggas are gonna get arrested. What you doing outside? All late. Three o'clock. You need to be out there. Go home. <laughs> I'm going to sleep. Anyway, um yeah, I think I think I think, you know, kind of what she said was it was was interesting in the sense of in the sense of also like i don't think enough people especially from what's considered like the top um hbcus are honest like i don't think like that was an honest call and i appreciate that call but i don't think enough of us are honest about life and about you know we we, you can love your school and love everything you need but it comes from that school but you also have to understand that like yeah it didn't pan out like it should have and everybody needs to get honest about that too whatever school you went to but especially hbcus we got we, we gotta start having more honest conversations anyway fam I'm going to my next call i'm going to 313 313 what's your name where you calling from what's on your mind you bet you bet what's going on with you how you it's doing it's been a minute. This is Keisha out in Texas. I ain't talked to you since you left Army. <laughs> What's going on, cowgirl? <laughs> out of Texas. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you bet, man. When you was talking about those uh, those kids, uh, mm, I, I was I was kind of messed up again because I remember that article when that young boy was uh, hugging that cop. You know, and that terror that I saw in his face. It was like this. This don't look right. Mm-hmm. And then when I, you know, further followed the story and found out that those women were abusing those children, and it, it, it just, oh, it did something to me. And then when the mother, when she came forward, said they didn't give her a chance to get clean, they wouldn't let her family have them. Mm. It, it, it cut to my now, heart. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. You're yeah. talking about the mother of one of the, or, or more than one of the, the, the black children, right, who said they wouldn't let her. Yeah. I remember Dante, that, too. I the, forgot the about that. boy named Dante. Yes. Yeah. His mama, yeah, his family was from Houston, and the mama had a drug problem, and I could identify. I'm a recovering addict, mm-hmm. and I know what it's like, you know, when you're going through that trauma, you know struggling with your addiction you're trying Absolutely. to do right by your family and your kids and then here come them people you know well you need to get you need to do this and you got to get some help and all of that but i also seen white girls they would give them chances over chances over chances and they can't stay with their family so oh. when i saw that story i identified with mm. it and it, it made me it made me angry but my anger and see i was listening to you at the same time because i was going through my own personal i mean i've been recovering for years but uh-huh. i was going through my own personal struggles Absolutely. and i found you and it motivated me i got up off my butt and i started doing some volunteer work oh working congratulations that's wonderful i sure did i sure did and then that led me to another place where I was working with uh, women in an adult foster care system, uh-huh. and that's when I ran into the Africans, okay? I'm listening to you, and I'm like, I had some experiences with African people. I even dated the dude from Kenya. But when I came upon you and I started asking the questions, like you said, who you? Who you? Man, look. Well, you, well, you, have, to, well, you have to understand for the first time, before we can even talk about allies versus enemy or all that, you can't do any of that if you haven't anchored your own identity, right? In terms of who are Say you, that. who are you as ADOS? We are our own specific tribe. If you haven't done, if you haven't done that work, and then you'll understand too. If somebody talks slick to you, no, you are not me. You can't do that. 
See, if an eight ounce person says That's something, right. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's right, and we can argue about it. We they'll say stuff that we don't say all of our lives as young people, right? And it's but if they you did. say something like, no, nah, wait a minute, hold on. So you have to ask the question, who you? Because identity matters, right? Because where you where you it come does. from determines a lot of times what you think about ADOS. And you can be a black person or a brown person and still hate ADOS. So you have to anchor Listen. the identity. That is the key, is anchoring the identity. It is key. It is key. And, you know, I hear often when I, you know, I listen to the, to the podcast and I follow you on Twitter. I, I support the newsletter. I give my tithes oh, when you. I can. You know, I share with my family and my family they know that we weren't raised to hate, but they didn't took it to a whole nother level when I talked to them about this ADOS. They're like, what you mean by ADOS? Mm. I said, it's lineage. It's about lineage. Mm. It ain't about skin color. We need to get away from that. I mean, I kick all the points that you took, you know, that you teach us, uh, you, you share with us. And man, I'm telling you, these people are lost. And I'm just at the point now in my life where I've got some acceptance. Some of the people that we love, some of the people that we see every day, they ain't going to make it. They just ain't going to well, make it. Everybody, and I, I everybody ain't going to make it. We, we all got to accept that. We all got to accept that everybody ain't going to make it. And you can do the best you can. And we all should do the best we can. They family, so we're going to try. But we have to be clear that everybody ain't going to make yeah. it. And that's just the way it is. No. And the last thing I just wanted to say to you about this Amy chick, look, Amy's, we got the Karens, we got the Beckys. I got them in my family because some of them family members is married to them Amy's, Karens, and Beckys. We all do. They do that stuff. And that book, when when uh, they were there, her property that we read, mm -hmm. I see it. All you've done is confirmed a whole lot of stuff I already knew. I have to you know, watch my mouth because I kind of walk between, you know, cussing and not cussing sometimes. And baby, look, I be wanting to cuss some of my family members out, <laughs> them Becky's and Karen. Don't let them and get I your pressure up just like because that. Because I know they ignorant. <laughs> they ignorant too. Uh, you bet. Yeah, they that's ignorant. True. That's true. That's true. They ignorant. So you know, we are living it truly in the information age, but the propaganda, the misinformation the misuse of information it's real it's real and if you don't keep your head you know twisted on like my mama used to say don't use your, that head more than a hat than rack than a coat rack than a hat you rack know? yeah i mean i mean not coat rack lord hat rack yeah, yeah use your head more than that, a hat rack yeah you know <laughs> but i see I, I see everything that you're doing and 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 i applaud you you know you. and when these folks be coming at you and stuff Child, remember the virtual world because <laughs> some of these same people if they saw you in the grocery store, they would be hey, you said they be trying to suck Child all people, your socks, okay? You know good well. Ain't no, these people won't never say nothing in your face. They say, they say behind your back. They ain't going to never say nothing in your face. They say, that's how you know a coward when you see one. When you said all that stuff online or wherever yep. you was, and I walk up and all over say, yep. hey, you fat girl. That's right. Oh, huh. Yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. you fat. Yeah, you, I, I, I like what you do. I don't care what nobody say. We going to get it. Yeah, we, we going to get, get it. it. We going to build Look, together. We got like, coming. Exactly. We going to get it. We gonna yeah. get it. Yeah. So I'm it's gonna keep to being, you know, who I am, where I'm at, and I'm gonna keep on growing. I'm gonna keep on learning. I'm gonna keep on sharing all of this message because it's good. And see, denial is not a river in Egypt, mm. and a whole lot mm. of people Speak gonna on be it. in Egypt. Mm. Mm. Thank you, fam. I appreciate that. I appreciate. All right, the fam. I love you. Love you back. And I appreciate it too because I forgot. Right. I totally forgot about the. I remember the story now of the, the black woman trying to get her kid back that the, 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 the white ladies murdered um and, and and you know that's what we got to do and the, she's telling the truth everybody ain't gonna make it you just got to do what you can where you can how you can but you got to also know everybody ain't gonna make it to the other side with you you got to try we got to get a, as, we got to work on getting a critical mass as best we can but everybody ain't gonna make it and i appreciate that and i appreciate all her honesty you know we all go through things and people try to hide too much of what we go through they got to be honest in this thing I'm going through 210, 210, what's your name, where you calling from, and what's on your mind? Oh, uh, you did. Uh, hey! Yeah, it's Joe Bond. Um, I just, uh, I didn't get a chance to, uh, to, to hear the show, but I did want to, uh, call in and thank you, uh, you and Tone, uh, 
you've given me the uh, the speaking point to have an intellectual conversation mm. with with people, and uh, tone has uh, brought the data mm -hmm. to actually get the visual. Exactly, and uh, your caller before actually took the words right out of my mouth. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more vitriol. I'm going to just say, uh, you know, I feel like when I'm talking to some of my family and I'm trying to explain to them and, and friends, I, I feel like, you know, you know, uh, there's no other way. I'm like, man, you guys living in, are you guys dumb or what? Um, mm. Like, here's the data. Here are the speaking points, and this is what we should be fighting for. Um, so, you, you, I've been, uh, I, I was turned on to you a little while ago. Um, I can't say his name, but you were on someone else's platform that we shall not speak of. <laughs> uh, and he kept on mentioning your name. And I was like, let me check her out. And when I checked you out, I was like, man, you remind me so much of my grandmother because you're, I believe on one of the shows, you were like, man, how how, how is a little lady like you talking so tough? <laughs> and, and that reminded me of my grandmother. That's high praise um, right there, family. I just want to say that. <laughs> listen, listen, you out here, listen, you got everything to lose. And you out here talking tough for you know, some of these politicians. And I, I, to my heart, respect that. Appreciate um, that. And, and you're doing the work. You and, and Tone are doing the work. And the uh, the uh, the chapters, you, you guys, are, I, be, I believe you say you you putting in line for a C4. You're, uh, yeah. you're getting everybody in line. Yeah. Um, work you, to you, do. You guys are, are doing outstanding work. I, I don't you. know. I don't know where else I can go. I, I mean, I'm. I, I tell people to go to ADOS 101. People argue me up and down. I give them the talking points. Tone has the graphs. He's got the the visual. All the charts. I'm like, what <laughs> more do you want? Yeah, I. You know what? You know what I'll say, fam. Before you go, let me just say this. I think propaganda is a hell of a drug. And I think what has happened to too many in our community is that propaganda made us feel like we could fly. Like that was the thing. Like instead of giving us policies to benefit us, they convinced us that like we could all be the Cosby's if we just tried harder and went to school and went to college. And they convinced us that if something went wrong, it was because something went wrong with us. Something went wrong with our behavior. And so I think... I think it's a we're gonna have a lot of work now. Like like the last caller said, all of everybody can't come, but it's gonna be a lot of work to 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 kind of you have to have people unlearn the propaganda that they have learned, and that's hard. And sometimes everybody got to take a break because this stuff you can't do this all the time. You got to take a break and enjoy yourself because people will drive you crazy. <laughs> I, I know about yeah, I know what you're saying about taking a break because. I missed the first half of your your show because I was at Papa Do's taking my family out and enjoying the evening, just taking a break. Be careful, stay away uh, from people. You know you don't want the COVID, but if it ain't, you know you can go. <laughs> I'm just saying, but yeah, you got to take a break. Whether it's whether it's somewhere to eat or whether it's you know I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna watch a comedy. Or I'm just going I'm not gonna do no Twitter or I'm not gonna do none of none of this stuff all day Saturday or Sunday or something. You gotta like you you probably had fun with your family at Papa Do's, right? You enjoyed yourself, had yourself some seafood. That's all right. Soft shell oh crab God. is my favorite. But it, I yeah. <laughs> I, I do want to thank you all because you all have have definitely given me a political education that has excelled me. When I listen to people speak now, I'm listening to them speak with purpose and direction mm. and especially the politicians and a lot of them you know even going back to the presidential and vice presidential debate they're they 
they don't want to acknowledge us or say anything about ADOS because to let everybody know that the United States was built on a lie and a sham, they would have to tear it all down. And, and you guys, like you guys say, you're not supposed, we're not supposed to be here, but you guys have put the information out and so many people are like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, what? They're, they're getting the information and they're putting it forth. Absolutely. Absolutely, fam. I want to thank you for calling in and you're absolutely right. But I think one of the take a thank you, fam. I appreciate it. I appreciate you calling in. Appreciate it, fam. And let me just say one thing. He's right about a, a few things. But let me just say one thing I said to him on the call, too. You, he said he just left Papa Doe. Now, listen, if y'all go to the restaurants, make sure they... I, I'm, I'm not going. I, <laughs> but but let, but they said, I think they said, if you're going to go, make sure it's not during a crowded time or something like that. But I'm not going to be anywhere indoors. But I'm just saying, make sure you, you know, you don't want a whole lot of people talking around you. It's COVID, so just be careful. But, like, what he said is... Um, I still take to go, but what he said is important in the sense of you got to take, I think everybody has to understand this. And I, I've talked to some, some chapter leaders about this too. You got to take a break. You, you got to take a break. You got to have a moment where you walk away and you do the thing that you enjoy, whatever that is for him. That's Papa Dole, That's some good seafood. That's his family. That's for him. For you, that might be something else. You got to know what your joy is. And then you got to take breaks and just go and do your, do your joy and, and be a part of your joy and just build yourself and build yourself up. Because if you don't do that, what happens is you're going to have burnout and you're just going to say, everybody's stupid. I'm burnt out. I ain't doing it no more. I throw everything in the trash. So just make sure you take time for yourself, you know, uh, whether it's a day, a weekend, a week, depending on how run down you are. You got to do it. You got to do it. Maybe you just don't check. If you online, maybe you just don't check Twitter sometimes. You got to take care of yourself. I see some ADOS accounts that just disappeared. Like they were, they may have gotten a thousand followers or whatever. Used to tweet and support all the time. And all of a sudden it just disappeared. I think a lot of that is burnout. So anyway, fam, I'm going to my next caller. I am going to uh, 215, 215. I'm coming to you. What is your name? Where are you calling from? What's on your mind? I'm on. You on? Hello. Ah, you good? Hi. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. Oh, I was not expecting to get on. Oh wow. See? Um. Okay. So let me open with this. Okay. I have been listening to the callers. Um, the last three callers, and um, I think that individuals who are who have a, di a direct interest in the plight of ADOS has to understand that, you know, the level of cognitive dissonance within our community is at an all-time high. Mm. And sometimes, like you said, you just have to take a break. Yeah. Sometimes, depending on who you, who you are talking to, you can't even bring up certain things mm -hmm. <laughs> because you already know their position, you know? So to get into arguments, because the data is there, the data is there. To get into arguments and to go overboard and to burn yourself out is not worth it. And the reason that I'm saying that is because I'm burnt out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm burnt. I'm burnt out. Wait, let me just let me just okay. say, fam. Let me just say. Let me just say. And you have to. You know what? I've gotten I've gotten better at the signals, but I failed a little like a while ago, right? Where Turn your background down just a little bit. But where, 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 like, I'm, I'm, like, I'll just be in bed and like, ooh, I don't think I can get up. <laughs> just that, today. Today uh -huh. ain't gonna be no getting up. And you, you gotta, you gotta notice, you gotta start getting better at the signs before you just like, I, 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 I ain't going nowhere, apparently. So I, I'm going, going, fam. I just want to point that out to the family while we was talking about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, also, the pandering, the pandering mm. is out of control, and the fact that people can't see the pandering and the going around issues or issues not being um, addressed directly in reference to the ADOS community, in reference to reparations, in reference to you know just human justice. Mm -hmm. 
you know, if you can't see those things and you can't see the signs, then it's definitely something wrong. Mm. And I'm not calling nobody retarded or nothing. <laughs> I'm just saying. I understand. Okay. All right. But um, I didn't see, I actually woke up from a net and I didn't get a chance to see your live stream. I'm, I'm sure it was phenomenal. Um, but I do want to give a shout out to you. Yeah, for sure. Um, for, I'm going to give a shout out to you. I'm going to give a shout out to Tone and everyone who is supporting the ADOS movement. Um, because this is very important. This is this is very, this is the most important thing that we can be talking about today. You know, we Absolutely. have to talk about our lineage. We have to talk about what is due to us. And we have to be diligent as far as getting it. If you're not, if you're not diligent, it's not going to happen. It's going to be rinse, rinse, and repeat. I, I absolutely agree. I'm I done. absolutely agree. Thank you, fam. I appreciate it. But I, and I absolutely agree. Like, I, I mean, it's going to be if you if you can't like if we can't, you know, you don't have a you you only have so long to kind of you know I don't I don't know how to describe it honestly. Um, I'm trying to fix something while I'm talking, but. But I don't know how to honestly describe it. But, you know, sometimes you sometimes in life, you kind of have moments. Right. Um, and mm -hmm. we didn't build this world. It just is what it is. And you kind of we're at a point now where you we have moments and that moment. We don't know how long that moment will last. Right. Like we don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We don't know what will happen. Right. So but right now we'll have a mm -hmm. moment. There's everybody has a, everybody has an understanding. Right, and it's kind of like, yeah. and it's kind of like. Let me see this. It's, it's kind of like a lot of people don't understand that like this is the moment, like this is ball game. This is ball game. This is it. Yeah, this, this is, is it. it. And you don't, and you don't, and there's no other way. There's no other way to kind of do it. This is just it, and and this is the movement. Like this is the movement that we've been waiting for since the last civil rights movement. This is it. And how how we gravitate and how we hesitate is going to determine like everything. So thank you for calling in, fam. I absolutely appreciate it. Thank you so much. And you enjoy your night and get some rest. And and again, naps are important. <laughs> naps are absolutely important. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. I'm going to my next call. Um, I am going to seven zero three seven zero three. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Um, hi, this is um, Nick from VA. Um, I wanted to talk more about Amy Cohen Barrett. Yes, oh, ma'am. That's her middle name. Um, yeah, Coney Barrett. Um, so, um, yeah, so I kind of have my biggest issue with this is just um, how the Democrats are really just putting on this theater and not going after her. There are mm. some real um, issues with her um, career and what she's done. First mm. of all, she's probably the least qualified nominee submitted to the Supreme Court in at least 60, 70 years. She's only been a practice, she only practiced law for three years, spent 20 years as a law professor, and then she only recently got named in November of 2017 as a judge. Mm. So she's done Talk about it. less than three years as a judge. But no one wants to talk about that with her. Um, secondly, she served when she was a lawyer. She worked on Gore versus Bush and, and setting the precedent in her. Not only and her, me, and is it, but John Roberts and also Brett Kavanaugh. Go, go talk about it. Because the it's payback. It's payback. <laughs> go ahead, fam. I'm Six sorry. other papers have been spreads about this, about her involvement with it. And they ask really soft questions. Like, well, what do you think about that? She should be recused, along with John Roberts and Brett Kavanaugh. Mm. You won't work on part of the precedent and then be able to sit as a judge and uphold it. Mm. That literally makes no sense. And then lastly, the biggest thing is that she, amongst all her other social issues, but she has constantly sided on the side of corporations. More recently, two months ago, she sided with the gig company in this incident, Grubhub, when several of the um, drivers 
sued Grubhub because in the fine print, it says you can't sue them if they don't give you your money. Mm. You have to go to a private arbitrator that they select. Mm. And they specifically went at her in her area because that's against state law. And her response was to uphold the corporate company because she was like, oh, they signed the contract. But that's literally why you have the ability to sue. Yes. When yes. people are trying to operate out of the law. And every, every decision that she's made when she is a judge has sided with corporations 100% of the time. Mm. And this goes into the fact that we have a Congress that doesn't like to legislate. And they like to kick these things down the can to these judges who have these lifetime opinions. Speak on. Who can go ahead and make decisions to vote with corporations. And so I don't understand if the Democrats in an election year are supposed to be fighting for the working people. Why you don't talk about how you have a judge who limits the amount of money people can make so they can afford whatever health care they get. Ooh. They can't even buy it if you're not making enough money and people are stealing the money. Oh, speak on it. You exactly right. You exactly right, and then the thing is, and then the thing is, how is that? Horrible. You're supposed to be a judge. How is that fair to, for you to, in order for me to work? And it's not you're not even giving me employment, and then you're saying I can't sue you, and it's written into the it's written into the contract that you signed to work here. I'm a, I might I'm feudal. This is feudalism. I don't have no rights. How is it, how does a judge uphold it? Well, it was in the contract. Who would exp- What are you saying that people can write a totally unfair? I mean, how how is it? You know, it, it, it literally goes against state law. But mm. you, you have a woman who is doing this. And I mean, so literally, if you look at all these things, she's not a good candidate. This isn't like, I just don't agree because yeah. you rule conservatively. Yeah. She, she's not qualified. And I wish they would go at her and eviscerate her with the same energy they used to get rid of Harriet Myers when Bush nominated her and she didn't meet the bill. Well, you know, well, you know what it is. instead of getting in there. Yeah. I agree with you. Well, you know what it is. The Democrats don't know don't know how to stand on principle, right? So they don't know how to go after nobody. Like, oh my God, we can't go after her for being unqualified. She got little Negro children, and it's just like that. Don't make that that, that don't mean a hill of beans in terms of you go out to her on the merits. The merits. But I'm sorry, but even the Negro children are Haitian kids that they adopted. That's true. She didn't even do like uh, Miss Congeniality and adopted a black American kid of an Haitian that's, immigrant. That, that's just true. This is true. This is true. This is true. Yeah, you're right, fam. But you know, we all talk about how we're all the same. So, um, and then the Democrats to turn around and make this into a parade about why the Affordable Health Care Act should be upheld and um, if she might overturn um, abortion, which none of the cases on the short term are up there. How come you're not bringing out these other arguments? And even I saw within Virginia, Tim Kaine talked about how she wrote a letter to take a, uh, an award away from Joe Biden so she wouldn't be looked at as um, someone who would be fair against ruling against Biden. So you're going to forget about the three years she was a lawyer yeah. and help work on a campaign yeah. to craft an argument against stop counting votes? Ooh, well, you, so, you know what? <laughs> she has been, she, this, is, this has been like, none of them have been good, but this has been like one of the laziest. It's almost like Democrats know, like, well, they're going to get her. They got enough. We just we just going to phone this in. We ain't going to really go broke. We're just going to ask you, do you disagree with white supremacy? Do you agree that white supremacy is a problem? You know, and we, do, you, do, what do, you, do, do you disagree with climate change? And I'm not saying you can't ask none of that. But it's like you're not going to litigate, like, her record and, like, her experience and, like, how that fits into, like, the job she wants right now. Or the job y'all selected, the book that um, Bush Lord have mercy, Trump selected her for. Like, what are y'all doing? I, I, I don't get it. And for them to say they're being tough and then to put on the charade defending the um, ACA when she clearly has a lot of vulnerabilities in her record and it's actually been posted in several papers, it's, it's, it's just it's just literally disgusting. I agree. Um, that's and all I want to say. If I take you. too much time, thank you, fam. I appreciate it. And and, and I think it, I think I think thank you so much. I think what it goes to is like the Democrats are a horrible opposition party because they're not opposition. <laughs> they're not opposition. I don't even think they consider themselves opposition to be an opposition party. That's part of what you're looking at. I'm going to my next caller. I'm going to six one seven six one seven. What's your name? Where you calling from? Uh, what's on your mind? Hey, but I didn't think I was going to get in. <laughs> What's going on, Reggie? How you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. 
Um, I'm calling in because I was really sparked by the first caller that called in. Mm. And when she said that her her children, in a lot of ways, were kind of raised on breaking brown. And, and I've said this in other conversations that when I look around at different Adolf people, whether it's you or Tone or the different chapter leaders or... Mm-hmm. Or, or different Adolf people telling their stories that when I look at them, I don't see them, I see myself. Mm. Yeah. So it, 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 it's funny, I, I'm going to tie this in to, to Barrett and as we go into 2020, but you just bear with me. Sure, uh, take your time. I, I was talking to my daughter the other day and, and you know, I, you know I, I bore the kids to death with, with the information and, and with the data, but I, I, I talked to my daughter the other day and I was pleased to find out that she's shaking the tables as she goes into high school. That's what she you know, that, you know that they're, 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 they're talking in the English class and creative writing and talking about debates. And one of the subjects was cultural appropriation by way of soul food. Mm. And, and the, teacher would say, the teacher was talking about cultural appropriation. What does that mean? And here's soul food as an example but then the teacher messed up and said, people of color. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm doing, man. Uh-huh. She, she, comes back, she, she comes back and says, hang on. We're not talking about people of color. So food, this, this is black people. The, the teacher comes back and says, oh, well, I just, you know, I was trying to be inclusive. No, no. <laughs> and, 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 and my daughter's like, hang on, we're talking about black people. And, and, and then other students chime in and saying, well, we're kind of all black. And then my daughter says, all black is not the same. No. This is good too. Teach them. Teach them. Uh, teach them, Reggie's ready, daughter. Teach the people. <laughs> The whole classroom unraveled with that. So I, 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 I just say that to, to say this um, and just kind of reiterate what, what you've said over time that a rep, a, a, as reparations is a, is a multi-generational project, the push for reparations is a multi-generational movement. Mm. And, and as we approach November, there's a lot of people specifically in the Democratic Party that are trying to sit there and wait us out. Mm. And I'm just letting y'all know as evidenced by, you know, my daughter, by the first caller, by Adolf's parents around the world, all of us who, who are on the call and in the chat, all of us can drop dead today. Our children are still coming. So the Democrats, y'all can play if you want, the next generation, uh, uh, you know, provided we stay on our square as Adolf, the Democrats will go the way of the Whigs. Like, like Mina's running off, Cornell's running off. Like, this this two-party game, or, 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 or this boogeyman that y'all are trying to play, that dynamic is not sustainable. And, 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 and to the other Adolf parents, you know, out there who, whose kids may not have figured it out, you know, I just encourage you to stay on your square with your kids because, you know, I've said before, I'll say again, deal with the data before the data deals with you. Keep giving your children the data, and, and, and if your son or daughter is hard-headed, the data's going to deal with them, and they're going to come back and say, wow, daddy, you was right. Mama, you was right. So Take y'all stay on the square, keep giving them the information. Now, I, I, I tie that in to, to, to Barrett because, you know, Barrett, the nomination is going to go through. We all know that. Yeah. But it's consequential in terms of multi-generational. And we're going to see Biden's failures, not only in our generation, but the next. And as we go into 2024 and beyond, it's not just Trump. It's Trumpism. We still have, you know, Cruz is, is, is still out there. Yes, you know, sir. we have... Um, Tom Cotton worries uh, me. Tom Cotton out of, what is it, Arkansas? Yeah, West Tom Cotton? Oh, he worries me. Mm-hmm. But, like, McConnell, I, I feel like he's going to stay there forever, you know, unless, you know, Harrison gets him out of here. But, I mean, it's, uh, it, 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 
it, it's a multi generational push. And in terms of, 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 of Barrett, there was another caller, you know, who really broke down her lack of qualifications. And I encourage everybody to go back and look at that and, and look at uh, her exchange with Senator Durbin because he really went, he really got at her in terms of voting rights. Um, Booker got at her in mm -hmm. terms of peaceful transition uh, yeah, of, of power insane. and some other issues. Like, Barrett is a problem. But again, this is a multi-generational push. So as long as we make sure the the children stay on their square and the data deals with them, like the Democrats are just going to have to figure it out and they're going to have to go away. The Republicans are going to have to figure it out. I would say even America is going to have to figure it out. Cause if, if I can't get my debt paid, if my children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren can't get their debt paid with America... And you don't deserve America. Let it go away. You know, burn it down. And and in terms of the, the politics of of presentation, I, I feel like that that was a great uh, title to to set it off with. Because a lot of people get confused when you throw white women in there, and mm. that's why political education is so important. That's why the book club that you're doing is so important. Because we went through. They were her property, and we understand yep. that the white woman is every bit as vicious, every bit as vindictive, every bit as racist, every bit as capitalist, every bit as imperialist as her male counterparts. And true? in a lot of examples, in certain situations, they are even worse because they get to hide behind this construct of womanhood that we have created under white hegemony mm. and, and and just like the, and just like the politics of presentation will not work the politics of representation will not work hence kamala harris uh -oh. this, this black girl magic nonsense y'all are trying to play is not going to work out and and on the other side this demonization of black males is not going to work out under these intersectional frames. There's a lot of talk about, you know, you know what Ice Cube, uh, you know, did with the Republicans. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Tone Talks, 4 p.m. tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, PST. We're going to, you know, we're going to lay that all out. But y'all blue checks and intersectionals need to go figure it out. Because y'all had all the energy for Ice Cube but none of the energy for Charlemagne the God when he went over and actually was used to push Trump's policies for Opportunity Zones. DeRay McKesson was on the Breakfast Club. Teray was on the Breakfast Club. But nobody wants to take the host of the Breakfast Club to account because you want to be back on the Breakfast Club. Uh -oh. you, don't get to, you don't get to begrudge the descendants of slaves to presenting their agenda to any polit to any politician that engages them. Now we had our criticisms of Ice Cube's contract with Black America. Absolutely, you know, we sat Absolutely. down with Ice Cube. Tone sat down with, with Ice Cube. But if, if, if anybody has an agenda and a politician comes to us, I give you my agenda, not the other way around. So yeah, I find it interesting that all these blue checks from. To Ray, to DeRay, to, to Brittany Patnett, who was running around with, with Obama, and all, all of these other people want to jump on Ice Cube, but you have nothing to say to Charlemagne the God. You have nothing to say to T.I. You have, you really don't have a whole lot of energy for no Kanye smart. West, who was running around like a madman, because you want to be in those spaces no smoke ain't nobody nobody has time for the politics of presentation or the politics of representation everybody gonna have to figure it out yeah because like i said if i got dead today my daughter's still coming that's all i gotta be there thank you reggie i appreciated that call let me tell y'all this is what we need if my if i if i fall out drop dead today my daughter's still coming and I think even in terms of we, we build this as a 501c4, 
one of the things that we have to do is we have to engage the youth. So we have to have youth outreach. We have to build up that apparatus as well. There's a lot that we're going to have to be building up, but he's right. You got to pour this into your kid. You got a kid, pour it into the kid. You got, you ain't got one, pour it into somebody else. We're going to do outreach. You ain't got pour it into somebody else. That's what we're doing. It doesn't end here. It doesn't end the day. And you can't just have that smoke just for Ice Cube. You, Charlemagne was up there. Charlemagne was up there in there talking about, remember when they, remember, what was this? The other day when somebody told Charlemagne that he was slow. When he was talking about, why, well, that's not why I was there. That's what, I, no, you, you, what, no, you knew why you was there. Everybody, you trying to get a little money for yourself. And how do we get these opportunities on? I'm going to start looking. Yeah, you was doing some Trump stuff. The Trump tax cut stuff. But ain't nobody got no smoke for you. No, y'all be even handed with the smoke. I don't got no problem with you having smoke for nobody, but you got to be fair about how you distribute the smoke. And then when ain't just we coming, the baby's coming too. I'm going right now to, um, who am I going to right now? 413, 413, I'm coming to you. What's your name? Where you calling from? What's on your mind? Oh, I got on. I'm surprised. <laughs> Everybody's surprised tonight. Oh, this is Candace. Candace, I'm, I'm in Massachusetts. Okay. And, uh, in a really Puerto Rican town, I might as well say it's and many many Puerto Ricans. Okay. And us blacks is we're we're in a minority here. Okay. And and it's a fight to try to get black stuff done or black stuff up. My my kids are grown and um huh, I'm I'm tired of it. It was it was just it was pain trying to get on this phone this phone call because I, I have MS, I've been sick for a long mm, time. I'm sorry. And and I and and, it, and you and you do feel tired. So I mean, a lot of times I I hear hear a lot of people. It just makes me mad because of, I went through a lot of stuff. Even though I'm up north, we go through the same stuff that people down south go through. My mm -hmm. mom went to Morris Brown. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it still exists anymore, no, really. but she she used to tell me the uh, give me give me speeches about, oh, you can make it, you can do this. And she hasn't made it. She's had a mm -hmm. rough time yeah. down there. Uh, not that not that what I've experienced been any different. Yeah. But, you know, I'm from down south, and, and so I understand uh, the type of racism, even though we have it here, because I've been staying out in the back yeah. at these jobs, too. Even mm -hmm. though I'm an engineer, I've, I've done all this stuff. It, it was just a pain. It was a pain. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I keep praying because I know that I have I have grown kids that and they they gotta survive too. They gotta survive too. Like your your last caller was talking about. Absolutely. So yeah. So you keep doing. You yeah. Just, you do what you can. Yeah. 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 You just do what you can. You can't get too frustrated. You just do what you can. You know, chest out, foot forward. You know, chin up. You just everybody just does what they can, and you know. You have other health issues that might prohibit you from, from like, you know, like you say, you get exhausted and you got to take care of yourself. So like, so like I got to do what I can, but I'm, I'm I got to rest. You know, I got to put this phone on speakerphone while I hold or whatever. Cause the thing is we need everybody to take care of themselves because if you're not here with us, that's, you know, that's, 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 that's horrible. That's one down. That's one family member. Don't nobody want that. So like, you know, you have to, you have to know and you can't, you know, let me just say this too. I, the thing about stress is you just can't hold it all the time. Like you got to put that stuff down. Like some, you know, even in your own mind, before you like do an activity, sometimes you just got to put stuff down and just, and just, and just be yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. And you got to make sure that you do that because if you don't do that, you bring your energy down and you're more likely to catch stuff and your body's more likely to feel somewhat degraded or whatever. You got to make sure you put that stuff down. You're doing the best you can. You still in it. You are engineer. You doing your thing. You got to do the best you can. And everybody knows what the best they can is for any given day. Some days the best you, you can ain't what it was on one day. The best you can on Monday might not be the best you can on Thursday. That's just, that's just life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's I, I, sure. <laughs> I just think we all got to, you know, I think one of the things about, you know, kind of movement and building and that kind of work is you got to kind of be gentle with yourself. Right. In terms of, you know, oh, yeah. you, you, you try to convince somebody or something. Your mama told you you, you could make it and she could make it. And sometimes you get angry with her. I understand. You know, but you just... Oh, yeah. Propaganda was a hell of a drug on her, too.
But don't keep telling me that, no. Oh, don't you keep yeah. telling me that, though. Don't she, still could, she still says that, but yeah, I, but I told either. her about you, <laughs> and she's a hard nut, nut to, to crack, so yeah, <laughs> but that, what it is My her. thing is, though, don't tell me about it. Like, if we disagree on that, don't tell me about it. Don't stress me out. I got enough stress. I ain't finna come here. You still believe that stuff, and you ain't made it. Listen, did you cook a peach cobbler today or not? Is that That's all the thing I want <laughs> <laughs> you cook I, I like oh, a nice black eyed peach. I don't get cook? those up here, not not very much. Oh no! Cozy. Oh yeah, that's I'm right. You can't have no peach cobbler. Yeah, you have to make your own peach cobbler with the little sugar, little granules, and you know the peaches that's well done, cooked with the nice with the nice crust. But anyway, you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. I understand. But yeah, you gotta have some peach cobbler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, well, yeah. I'm not gonna keep you too long, but I I do thank God, thank God for you when you're you and told and and all all of you young people because I'm 50 and it's late in the game for me, but I, I try. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> but that's but that's all we that's all we can do. What are we gonna do is try. We yep. got we got to put our best foot forward every day. Do what we can. Take breaks. Move, move. The day I can't move so much, to, you know, I, you you got to We just that's what we got to do because it's a long game. And if you start running real, real fast in the marathon, you ain't going to make it past about five miles. So that's kind of what we have to train ourselves to do. And we have to, like Reggie said, train yourself. Train, don't just train yourself. Train your kids. If you have kids. If you don't have kids, train somebody else's child. Hey, but don't do too much. People get mad at you about the children if they ain't in the movement. So, <laughs> so but, you know, you have to plant right. seeds. That's what you got to do. And that's what we're doing. Yep, yep. Well, God bless y'all. Thank you. God bless you too. I'll talk to you later. Have you a too. good, good, good week. Good you night. too. And get you some rest. Get you some rest. Thank you, fam. And y'all, y'all, y'all can do some of y'all can go to bed. Or I know sometimes it's late. Oh, it's late. I gotta go. I don't went too long because I started late because I couldn't get the YouTube thing right. Um, so fam, that is it. I didn't realize it was so late for tonight. I do appreciate all my callers. I will be back. I will be back and we will have additional calls. Don't think this is your last time. We will not do the thursday um third thursday but i'm gonna try to go live sometime earlier so this is why you should turn your notifications on so that you'll know when the live goes because it won't be on its regular time if you don't have notifications you won't know i'm just saying fam so fam as we get ready to get out of here and y'all get ready to finish your libations and go to bed you know go get in some warm cover or depending on what you know depending on what side of the coast you on do not forget on the 10th, like I said at the beginning of the show, The Half Has Never Been Told. That is going to be our book club, December the 10th. Um, not our usual time to do that, so please keep that in mind. That's not our usual day or none of that stuff. Um, so, you know, because we had to do it the first time. If y'all went here last show, I, I put it on Thanksgiving. And so I had to move that because it was Thanksgiving. I didn't pay attention enough to know that it was Thanksgiving. People going to be on the turkey and they're going to be sleepy. So December the 10th is when we will be having that book club. Um, please hit that like if you have not hit that like button and you are there. Please hit the like uh, if you want to if you want to donate dollar sign breaking brown for Cash App and Patreon.com slash Y or uh, DonateBrown.com. But remember, hitting that like button is free. Subscribing if you have not is free. Hitting that bell is free. Cost you no money. These are ways to help that cost you absolutely no money. So many ways to to freely help, mostly by hitting that like button. I would appreciate it. So please, fam, you know, don't, don't, don't. And remember, also remember I said I was, um, I'm not having the chapter meetings this Thursday. I mean, this, this Sunday, it will be a week from Sunday. So the next chapter meeting will be a week. Um, the first chapter meeting, the inaugural chapter meeting will be a week from this Sunday. So a week from this Sunday. I initially said it was Sunday, but I have another meeting I got to have. And then I'll, I'll do that one then. So what else do we have, fam? So uh, that may be it. If anybody has anything else, I feel like I'm missing something. Um, but what can I do anyway fam thank you mods I appreciate it as always you all always work hard and I appreciate it because trolls always want to run through that's what they do we don't give them life so fam please be easy breezy take care of yourself until next time when I might pop up make sure you got the notifications um, and you know we're gonna pay attention to everything that's happening in the political world right now we're gonna figure it out and we're gonna keep moving and we're gonna keep building and ain't nobody gonna stop this train so good night, Finn.